all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show so the discussion that we did last week about n1 methyl pseudouridine that is used in mrna vaccines and uh, the ribosomal slippage which causes off target proteins i received some messages from friends from viewers that what are these target proteins how dangerous or not dangerous are these and what is this n1 methyl pseudouridine so i wanted to do a follow up more about the mechanism of production of off target protein as they called it and the importance of the pseudouridine and the researchers um, intent in my opinion for what they were looking for if you look at this study this particular study that we discussed last week it has 21 vaccinated individuals 20 not uh, vaccinated with another vaccine chadox1 then eight mice so this is not a study based on which we can make a decision to say vaccines are good or vaccines are bad this study is an important study to identify that there is a flaw in the vaccine mrna vaccine design or platform and then in the future so this is an important thing to consider in the future if we use mrna vaccine platform to make other products are proteins self proteins for example let's say more thyroid hormone or let's say more pituitary hormones or let's say some other enzyme that is our enzyme and that mrna has these bases which cause the ribosome to slip on them then the partial proteins created can produce autoimmune effects or as they call it harmful effects so it is a problem in the platform which the researchers didn't just come in and say here is a problem and tada let's go back they actually presented a solution as well which i discussed all of that last time so today i'm going to go more deep into the mechanisms of how the off target proteins are produced and show you some charts and diagrams from the same study so get ready and let's start for it so here is the um studies title we have the intended protein was let's say spike protein in this specific case off target proteins there can be many proteins and we'll discuss about that and then n1 methyl uridine pseudo methyl pseudo uridine nucleotide is the one um, that is being identified as some nucleotide that was doing it so now with that let's very quickly look at the um some of the narrative then we'll go to my drawings so first of all this is drbean.com in the description of this video there is a link for getting access to drbean.com at a very very inexpensive rate so that is one now about n1 methyl pseudouridine what is that so here i'm going to start from here m1 methyl pseudouridine is a naturally occurring modification found in 18s rrna and trnas and similar to pseudouridine modified synthetic mrna let me see if i can increase the size synthetic mrna where is it where is it? here modified synthetic mrna is the presence of m1 pseudouridine in synthetic mrna has been demonstrated to result in reduced activation of rna sensors in the cells so this study is kind of a slightly opposite in its messaging to the other study that you would see this study said that using the naturally occurring m1 methyl pseudouridine causes the ribosomes to perform better so if you see here they say the furthermore the presence of m1 pseudo methyl uridine in synthetic rnas show increased translational effic efficiency in cell free extracts multiple mammalian cells and mouse models so this is a study <laughs> that is saying that hey we have this naturally occurring nucleotide and when it is used in synthetic uh, mrnas it actually makes the ribosomes more efficient on the contrary this study that we have been discussing uh, this actually shows that ribosomes actually slip 
So one context you already have now. The second thing I want to read some part from this article. This is University of Cambridge. This is their article because the researchers are associated with this university. This is the original uh, study that we discussed last time as well. We're going to do some more discussion today. So in this article, I want to read something that is really important. And I had uh, missed that point and a friend pointed it out. So <clears throat> The latest development being this uh, change that these researchers are offering for this new mRNA problem that they've seen. The latest development led by biochemist Professor Anne Willis and immunologist Dr. James Thavantiran from the MRC Toxicology Unit at the University of Cambridge. And let me increase the size. So give me one second. Cambridge built upon previous advances to ensure the prevention of any safety, hear this out, to ensure the prevention of any safety issues linked with future mRNA based therapeutics. This is a very important, they didn't say over here future mRNA based vaccines. What they're talking about is that if this platform of this new mRNA technology, producing the mRNA, putting that in the lipids, giving it to us, this platform, if it is used with these modified nucleotides on it, then there is a flaw in this, and that flaw can cause off-target proteins to be formed, which could, if these are self-proteins, imagine you're trying to make my thyroid hormone through the mRNA uh, therapy, and that thyroid hormone is partially incorrectly made. I might develop antibodies against that, and now that would become an autoimmune issue as well, possibly. So that's what they're talking about, that fix it before it is used for other therapies. The researchers identified that bases with a chemical modification called n one methyl pseudouridine, which are currently contained in mRNA therapies, are responsible for the slips along the mRNA sequence. Then they say the team then redesigned mRNA sequences to avoid these off-target effects by correcting the error-prone genetic sequence in the synthetic mRNA. Now, let me explain it, that the synthetic mRNA is that this mRNA is made in the lab, so that is why it is synthetic, lab or in, in production uh, factories. And then the nucleotides that are used on it they are naturally occurring as well. However, they refer to them as chemical modifications. So if you see here, chemical modification called N1-methylpseudouridine. So here, Dr. James Tevantiran says, we need to ensure that mRNA vaccines of the future are as reliable our demonstration of slip resistant mRNAs is a vital contribution to future safety of this medicine platform. So they're talking about the platform itself. Okay, now with some of this, one more comment and then we go to my diagrams. Our work presents both a concern and a solution for this new type of medicine and result from crucial collaboration between researchers from different disciplines and backgrounds. Okay, so I'm stopping this reading. You have already seen this study. I am going to my diagrams now. <laughs> so let's start. First of all, off-target proteins. I'm going to explain this whole talk is about explaining how they're built and what do they mean. But I'm going to just read a paragraph for you from the study where they talk about off-target off proteins. They talk about it in many places. We found that response to one frame shift, shift protein. Sorry, my mouse isn't working correctly. So give me one second. I have to fix my mouse. So one second, I'm going to stop sharing and close my program so that I can restart it and see if the mouse can work correctly. So one second. In the meantime, I can sing you a song. <laughs> so 
Starting, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so back here. <clears throat> we found that response to plus one frame shifted spike peptides, and I would explain that in a second, were significantly increased in vaccinated mice compared to untreated mice or those vaccinated with CHADOX1, that was the adenovirus-based vaccine for COVID-19, which does not produce antigen from translation of n one methyl pseudouridinylated mRNA. Good. So what they're saying is we found the ribosome to be slipping. Remember, I showed you the other study where they said ribosome actually does not slip. So there are multiple studies here. Both BioNTech and CHADOX1 vaccinations produced L-spot re response to in-frame spike. What they're saying is that they both, the vaccines, did produce a whole spike, and they could confirm that by seeing the immune response against it. However, these data suggest that plus one frame shift products encoded in Pfizer BioNTech spike mRNA are T cell antigens for inbred mice to which off target immunity can be detected following vaccination. So, for the um, Broken Forever says, Hope you're well, Dr. Bean, missing you. Yes, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. So for the Pfizer BioNTech, there is a plus one frame shift. So I did this diagram last time. So I'm not going to explain this one again. I'm actually going to use an example. And I got the idea of this example from one of the comments under the previous video. So look at this sentence. Here is an example sentence. What happens is, let me go back for a second here. The the amino acids that are present in proteins, proteins are called peptide chains, polypeptide chains. Amino acid, one amino acid is represented by three nucleotides or three bases. These three bases together are called a codon. One codon represents one amino acid. It is also possible that many codon can still represent the same one amino acid. So in the genetic language for mRNA, we can say that the whole uh, document for various recipes is written in three letter words. Every letter has to have three words. And every one word means one amino acid. It means something, but it has to be three letters. So if you come in here, you would see that this sentence has three letter words. I cooked it up. <laughs> so dog and cat saw big hot sun. In here, these individual letters are called nucleotides. And the three of them together are called one codon or one base. And they all mean something. For example, dog means something and means something, cat means something. So when there are three of them, they mean something. They mean an amino acid in our body. Now, if for some reason, while you are reading it, or when I was typing this for you, imagine I forgot this W here. And imagine that when I forgot this W here, we still need three letters, so we are going to start combining the next letter to this one to make three letters, and then we are left with two. We, we're going to combine this next one here to make three again, so the result will be that when we slip on W, and by we I mean ribosome, then we'll end up with the following. Dog and cat, they are still correct, that is still the original sentence, but W got slipped. So now S A became combined with B, B so SAB, I G H, O T S, and can you imagine that this is become unintended? The, these are representing some amino acids as well, but we did not want here an amino acid represented by S A B 
that is the amino acid here or IGH, that is amino acid here, which could be whatever amino acid. And of course, the resulting pattern of amino acids that is produced here, which will be called an epitope, that is also not what was intended. This, this genetic code will give rise to a protein. That protein will be called an off-target protein. Some part of it is still like the original one, but the remaining part of it is just a new invention. So I want to show you from that study how they represented this. So if you read with me from here, this is, let's say, the original spike codon sequence, the green one. This is the original mRNA. This is the opening end of the mRNA or the cap area. This is the poly A tail or the end of it. This is the coding sequence. And if you make a protein from there, you can see that this protein is made. The amino acids have one amino end and the other one carboxy end. So you would see this everywhere. So just ignore that for the time being. This genetic material made this long protein, which when folded will become a spike protein. So we'll say this was the intended protein. However, if you see down here, there is a frame shift. The ribosome got skipped. Just like I showed here that W got skipped and we ended up with this weird uh, combination. So when the frame shifting occurred, there is a part of the protein that is still the original protein that was intended. But then there is a remaining part, which is not what was intended. This could be anything. We actually cannot just simply say that we know what it will be. We'll have to look at the genetic sequence, then see where the slip occurred, then create the new sen sentences, then see what amino acids are represented by them to be able to then say what will be the new protein. And this is also possible that these new proteins in everybody are produced differently because their ribosomes are slipping at various locations but still there are more common slippage locations that I'm gonna show you in a second. So here you can see that this is one type of, in the last talk, I referred to them as garbage or trash protein. So this is one type of off target protein. This is another different length. This is another, this is another. So the question is how do they end up being this way? So let's look at, um, so I'm going to show it to you a little later. I want to first show you that in these 21 people and 20 people, did they actually see that our immune system, these individuals who were vaccinated with Pfizer-BioNTech, where this issue is, did their immune system have a response to these bad proteins, off-target proteins? So here, this is the, this chart that they have for those of us who are medical uh, professionals or students. This is the chart of the interferon gamma produced by the T cells. So presence of interferon gamma against the frame shifted protein. So if you see here, this one, one frame shift peptide, this one, another frame shift peptide, this is another frame. What are they doing? They took some people who were not treated, or let's say mice, who were not treated with any vaccine. And they gave them this frame shifted peptide. They gave them this off target protein in them. And they tried to see if the body reacts to them. So here, no reaction. Then this is the CHADOX1 where no frame shifting problem occurs. If you give them frame shifted proteins, the garbage and trash protein, their immune system doesn't really react to this because their immune system isn't aware of it. But if you see here, this is Pfizer-BioNTech individuals. If you give them frame shifted product, they are re reacting to it. That means when they originally got the vaccine, they had developed these frame shifted proteins and they responded with their immune system against them. And so that immune system response is still present. 
And then if you see here, this is Pfizer-BioNTech against M protein, just to make sure that this response is coming from the vaccine and not from the virus. Now, talking about the virus, this kind of frame-shifted wrong proteins will be produced as the virus is replicating as well. Virus, when they are making their own daughters and they are making their own proteins, these can go wrong as well, and they can frame-shift as well, and they can also have ribosomal errors, and they can be... Um, disabled viruses, if you if you will, or incorrectly produced proteins in that case as well, which could have similar behavior too. Okay, so here is another chart from this study. This is an interesting chart. This group is for those who had Pfizer-BioNTech vaccination. This group is those who had CHADOX1 or the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine or the adenovirus-based vaccine. Here, this is the immune system's response for a Pfizer-vaccinated individual's serum's immune system response if it is exposed to spike. So these dots are the responses to spike, immune system's response to spike. If the same individuals, if you give them these frame shifted proteins, then you see that they're also producing a response against that too, which means their immune system has seen these proteins before and is remembering them and is responding to them. And this is control. And if you look at the adenovirus based vaccine where frame shifting did not occur, you can see that these plates are clear, meaning really it didn't respond to frame shifting because these cells were not aware of this. Now, this is the most beautiful diagram in this whole study. This diagram shows, so if you see here, the, the U star in this diagram, the U star represents N1 methyl pseudouridine. So you can see the U stars present, this is a U star, this is a U star, this is a U star, right? So they are representations of, of the methylated pseudouridine. Now remember, because it occurs natu naturally as well, it is possible that our RNAs have at various spots the pseudouridine, but not in all spots. And uh, one, the study that I showed you, the very first one, that study actually discusses it, that the difference between a synthetic mRNA and a natural mRNA with this pseudouridine is that natural mRNA may have pseudouridine here and there, but in the synthetic uh, mRNA, all uridines will be changed with methyl uridines. So you see here, all these star uridines are methyl uridines. Now, in this diagram, it's really, really fascinating diagram. This yellow area is where the ribosome is, is slipping. This yellow area is the slippage site or slippery site. Now, please remember that cat and dog saw the big hot sun. When the ribosome will slip here, then of course, we will have to make new codons by incorrectly connecting the bases that were not originally connected to make a codon, right? So to give you an example back here, once a slippage occurs here, then the remaining codons try to, you know, organize, stay organized in three or the reading continues in three while one is slipped and the codons are now representing unintended different amino acids. And all of a sudden, the structure is different, unintended, not known what that structure is until you read that sequences and then decode it. So here, they say here is a slippery site. When the ribosome slips there, then look at this blue one. This is really, really beautiful. This blue has just become a stop codon. So what happens is when an RNA is going through this and creating protein, it needs to know where do I stop? For example, if I give you a document to read, you will want to know where do I stop? Do I stop at the first 
paragraph or the first page or the 10th page or the whole book. So every messenger RNA has a stop signal at the end or called a stop codon. So in this particular diagram, the blue ones, the blue ones are stop codons. Now, originally, originally, if the ribosome did not slip, this purple one was the stop codon. So what does that, that mean? Let me take the first example. If ribosome was not slipping, if we did not have the methyl pseudo methyl uridine used, then the, the ribosome will start making proteins three bases at a time, continue going, 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 going. Then it would continue in this line, then this line. And when it would reach here, it would stop. So whatever it read in this area, that will become a protein. Very important point. But because the ribosome slipped here and an unintended, incorrect, <laughs> unintended is a better word, sequence emerged, ribosome stopped here. So now what is the protein that we made? We made this protein. In this protein, this much is good part of the protein. It looks like some part of the spike protein. And then this all is a bad protein or remaining bad part, unintended part. Now, this part, what is this? Does it look like any part of our tissue? Does it have any mimicry there? Does it not have any mimicry at all? Don't know. We will have to read this sequence, one amino acid at a time, construct that into a protein, and then see if there is a response to that or if there is any mimicry at all. Hopefully, because it is a foreign protein, even after having base slippage, it may still be something that looks foreign and not like our tissues. If it does look like a tissue, then we have a problem. Okay. Then there is a possible uh, stop here as well with the slippage. So this is also possible that the protein continues to be made even beyond this stop codon because now it is slipped, right? And so it is not reading as a stop anymore. The sun is not reading as sun now and the protein continues to be made till here. See another example. Once again, if you see here, the blue one is one frame shifted stop. So if the ribosome starts working on this one and slips, 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 and it reaches this blue, it stops here. This is the total protein mate. What is this protein's epitope? What is this protein structure? When it would fold it up, what would it look like? We don't know. Or at least it is not mentioned in this um, uh, study. You could say that, hey, can we know what this protein is going to look like? Now I'm going to tell you one more thing. It has been for decades that we're trying to figure out that if we know the sequence of a protein, can we see the 3D structure? And there used to be every year a competition for writing a software that would decode the 3D structure from genetic material information. And it was very difficult till I think two or three years ago when there was a computer that has... I think produced the folded protein structure with 99% accuracy. So you can, for example, tell me that, hey man, why don't you just look at what are the sequences here and tell us what is the shape of the protein that will be formed? I have no idea. It is going to be very simply, if I take some thread and I put it in my hand and say, you tell me what would it look like? Nobody can actually predict because how would the thread be mushed in my hand? Nobody knows. Even I don't know. So this is one possibility. Then here is, look at this, you, you, you. This is going to be slipping here. And ideally this was the stop, but now it would stop here. So if the ribosome slips here, it's going to continue to make this protein beyond the stop and till here. And now again, we have a, fortunately, a big protein, for, I shouldn't say fortunately, a big protein, but with the unintended amino acid sequences, that could end up being whatever. And same thing over here as well. 
these proteins after slippage that will be formed as you can see in this case a a protein that would go till here it will be good here and then unintended here here a small protein here another small protein or a protein after the slippage here all the way till here so i hope that this makes sense that what do they mean by unintended proteins and how are they formed so this is how they're formed now continuing the question is okay fine they were un unintended proteins they saw were the immune systems of those who were vaccinated responding to this so important to note that one third or 30 percent of the individuals this is just 21 individuals not a very large number 30 percent of them were responding to this and that is shown here and this is the graph i showed you before this is another graph where once again the immune system's response is shown so this is the uh, oxford astrazeneca and immune system is not reacting to it if we have the bad proteins given to these individuals or mice and here there is a reaction so the question did the immune system actually respond yes now how did the immune system respond the immune system from these individuals so let's say i'm one of the pfizer um, uh, vaccinated individual which i'm not i am moderna vaccinated but imagine if it is result is going to be the same they both are mrna imagine if i'm pfizer vaccinated and you take my blood and then you expose my blood to these uh, partial proteins unintended proteins of target proteins and see my cells responding to it with interferon gamma what does that mean what happened in my cells so here this is the innate arm innate arm has macrophages dendritic cells nk cells etc neutrophils I'm, I've just made dendritic cell. A dendritic cell will present the unintended protein, the off-target protein. I made that as green and red to depict a part which is kind of original and a part which is unintended. What is it? I do not know. And that is presented to T helper one cell. T helper one cell in the presence of interleukin 12 will transform or differentiate into T helper one cell. T helper one cell would then activate cytotoxic T cells. Now T helper one cell produce interferon gamma, cytotoxic T cells produce interferon gamma and natural killer cells produce interferon gamma. The researchers saw that the immune cells produce interferon gamma. That means when these off-target proteins were given, the memory cells, memory T cells on the cytotoxic pathway were active. Researchers did say only once that it is possible that the B cell pathway that make, which would make antibodies will be active as well but what they had confirmed is the t-cell cytotoxic t-cell pathway was active that is why interferon gamma was measured interferon gamma meant that this pathway was active against these proteins now would this pathway cause inflammation yes there is cytotoxic cell that is going to go and kill the cells that are showing this protein or that have similar epitopes to this protein and that would cause inflammation. Similarly, when interferon gamma is produced, interferon gamma causes macrophage and dendritic cell activation, which would then cause local damage and inflammation. So will the patient have inflammation? Yes. Now, can an off-target protein cause tissue damage? The answer is really, it will depend what is the epitope that is formed in the bad part of the protein in the again i shouldn't call them bad because all amino acids are amino acids in the unintended pattern so what will happen with this off targeting amino acids will change will end up with a sequence of amino acids that we didn't intend to have the size of the protein will change folded 3d structure will change what will that structure be we don't know until we actually look at those proteins in case of therapeutics meaning 
imagine as I give you the example, if you give me a mRNA drug that is going to give me more uh, thyroid hormone, then that is a therapeutic. And where <coughs> if that therapeutic caused partial thyroid hormone to be constructed and my immune system went after that, then I have an autoimmune disease. So if you said to me that, is the mRNA platform ready for future therapeutics, then I think the solution has to be put in before it should be used for that. And if I, um, because I closed my references, I want to show you what they said. The researcher. So here, the University of Cambridge, and I read this to you before. I'm going to just read it because it's a good point to read this. Um, he added, we need to ensure that mRNA vaccines of the future are reliable, are as reliable. Our demonstration of slip resistant mRNAs is a vital contribution to future safety of this medicine platform. So they talk about the therapeutics, they talk about the platform. So if somebody said that, hey, is this platform ready for some new therapy, which may be according to these researchers, they said given in more frequency or in bigger doses. If that happens, then this platform needs to be fixed. So now the question is, how can an epitope emerge that might be cross-reactive. So one is very simple. You have a partial thyroid protein produced that could become cross-reactive. Another is the protein folding. So imagine here we have an off-targeted protein produced. It has various amino acid sequences. I gave them colors, blue, black, green, blue, purple, black and red. So you look at that and you say, okay, that is the sequence. Then imagine we have a cell which has this sequence. Let me make it a little bigger. This cell has the sequence black, red, black, green. Again, for the epitopes, the sequences are bigger. They, for, <coughs> excuse me, when I speak more excitedly, I start coughing as well. So the, um, for the epitopes, let's say for B cells, these are anywhere from 7 to 13, 14 epitopes or the amino acids long. T cells have a different variation, but let's just use four for our example. Let's say there are four amino acids that are a sequence on a cell. And here we have an off-target protein made. When this protein folds, again, I, I have already said that folding and predicting how the fold would look like is almost impossible, although we've come close to 99% in one place with one computer. So you can't just take a protein sequence and go to them and say, can you please tell me what the fold will be? But imagine that when the folding occurs, after folding and twists and turns of a one dimensional product or a linear product into 3D shape, imagine that this pattern emerges on it. This pattern is the same as here. So if we make antibodies against this area, then those antibodies can attack here as well. That is how an epitope can be formed that can cross react. But again, they have not proved it in their study. And in their study, they said all the people who were vaccinated, they were healthy without any ill effect is the word they used. So again, this is too small of a study to say, is the vaccine causing any issue or not causing any issue? 21 people, 20 people, and seven or eight mice. So that's a small study. The point of the study is to identify a flaw in the platform and identify a solution for the platform. Okay. Now, finally, where will cross-reactivity cause damage? So if you said that, okay, fine, we have these proteins that are made and with folding, we do not know what are they going to do. Can they cause damage? So the, first of all, they are causing inflammation because they're acting as a foreign protein to which our immune system is responding and attacking. And so inflammation occurs, fine. Inflammation will occur. Can there be cross-reactivity? Maybe not. 
Maybe those epitopes are not cross-reactive with any of our, our tissue. Many viruses and bacteria come in, not all of them cause cross-reactivity with our cells. Those that cause the reactivity can end up causing autoimmune diseases, which include SARS-CoV-2. Maybe a tissue cross-reactivity? Maybe. Meaning, can their cross-reactivity be that can occur? Yes. Can it be no cross-reactivity? Yes. Now, if the cross-reactivity or mimicry occurs, what will be the tissue? We do not know. It really depends what is the epitope format that emerged from here. So when the new protein is formed after slippage over here, what are the epitope, what are the amino acid sequences that emerged there? After folding, how did they look? That would define if there is any cross-reactivity or not. Neither does this study mention, and I don't think that with this data they can actually tell that. They have identified a flaw and they have identified a solution. And the way they um, talk about that is by saying um, why do I keep closing it? Because I have a computer memory issue. That's why. <laughs> so let me just very quickly read once again. And this is the last one. Researchers redesign future mRNA therapeutics to prevent potentially harmful immune responses. That is their intent. So this is a discussion. Thank you very much for hearing. Um, and can I have a shameless plug? If you like high quality medical lectures, look how much work goes into understanding and putting these things together. So you have a balanced and accurate view of the world instead of some conspiracy. Um, you, you saw that there are actually reasonable concerns and this is about the vaccine platform. And this is coming from a good university. And we presented it to you. So if you would like this, uh, get access to drbean.com. There are more lectures over there. My plan for 2024 for drbean.com is to offer pharmacology set. So I'm going to do complete pharmacology or as much as I can, one or two we uh, lectures per week with CEs and CMEs. Plus, I'm going to try to complete microbiology. So that is my target. Uh, other teachers, for example, Dr. Priya, she's working on uh, diabetes. Dr. Faraz is working on emergency medicine. And Dr. Tom King from UK is working on dermatology. And we'll keep adding more doctors who will present their lectures. So get access. That access is really, really inexpensive. You'll be amazed with the access. And there are other links as well if you would like to support this work. But anyways, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I would see you tomorrow. Bye for now.